This has been um, this has been a long time coming. We have been planning this wānanga hui Māori for a number of months, and I would like to start by just acknowledging you all for uh, um, giving your time to the kaupapa. Um, koto kua haramai tawahi, koto kua haramai tafiti tata, um, kua faka mana itene o ngā kaupapa o tato itene o kamihi. Um, yeah, tinara tato. Etika na te koro Emery. Um, ko te tahi o ngā kairanga hau, mo te um, mo ngā tohu. Um, so tinara tato. My name is Wayaria Rameka. I am one of the kairanga hau, the researchers on the ngā tohu program. And um, today we have been lucky enough to be able to pull together. Uh, a number of our kairanga hau um, to speak about our project and to speak about some uh, forward thinking in terms of where to next, um, specifically for one of our whānau. So, um, tēnei au, ka mihi kau atu ki tōku, tōku uh, tuakana nei, um, a Kelly, she'll be speaking after me, um, talking about some of the, the research processes that we've undertaken in our programme. Kia koe, Uncle Wayne, ngā mihi kia, kia koe, kua haroma i tawhiti, um, kua fa whakamana i tēnei o ngā kaupapa. Um, me te whānau, no toko maru bai. Ngā mihi koutou, ngā mihi. Um, so, where do we go, where do we go from here? I'm going to have a look at my next one. Ngā tohu o te ao was a research project that start, it was a three year research project and it started from actually a kōrero that Regan up the front here, myself and Kane who isn't, well he's actually next door, um, had while out in the moana doing some rangahau, kohi pipi maybe on Paritaha. Um, and we were talking about some of the challenges that we had been experiencing in the world of researchers as kairanga hau Māori um, and kind of, you know, trying to, trying to find systems and methods that were um, going to support us in our monitoring of the moana. And one of the things that we found in the previous years that we had been working in the moana is that our research our monitoring programs weren't always aligned with the natural systems of taiao. Um, in, in my experience in mainstream science, we kind of um, think up an idea, decide on how we're going to do it, and we just go out and kind of collect, collect the data without kind of acknowledging that the data that we're collecting actually sits within a whole system um, of, of 
you know, um, of cycles, a whole system of cycles. And so we were finding that our data that we were getting was, although it was good, it wasn't, I mean, we weren't able to compare uh, across um, time and over years the way that we wanted to. And so we were looking at that time for a, for a, a framework or a, a tauwira that uh, would help us to align our mahi in taiao, our monitoring mahi, with the cycles and the systems, the natural processes of taiao. And um, we were very lucky that at the time, the uh, one of the emergent kind of bodies of knowledge that was being shared and developed at the time, so this was uh, three, four, maybe even five years ago, was Maramataka. And so we connected with, you know, the people in our world who we kind of trusted in this space and um, got them on board to develop uh, a research program that could help us as researchers at the time to um, collect meaningful and useful data um, for, for our monitoring programs, <coughs> utilising the knowledge of maramataka. And so that's basically where, where Ngātohu kind of sprung, sprung from and was developed out of. And, um, and so one of the key and core components of well, maybe I first uh, I'll mention that there were two kind of projects that developed alongside each other. One was around reclaiming the knowledge of Maramataka, because if we're going to implement a knowledge system, um, we need to reclaim the knowledge within that system. And so, one of the core focuses of that of our first kind of initial stages was the reclamation, the reclamation of Maramataka, and then the other. Um, components that we identified as being um, an important component to facilitate the reclamation of, of Mātauranga Māori and Maramataka knowledge was the preservation. So how do we, within our contemporary world today, <coughs> utilise dig digital technologies to be able to preserve the knowledge reclaimed within the, um, the Ngātohu programme? And so those two programmes are going to be talked about today but those two pro programs work side by side. Um, yeah, both serving into each other. So the Ngātohu project was, <laughs> um, had three research, <laughs> three research um, whānau, research areas. Ngātaki, the whānau from Ngātaki, so Ngātaki School, and the whānau of Waiora Marae. Um, we worked with them to reclaim knowledge around Maramataka. Um, Tokomaru Bay, so some of, our, some of those faces may look familiar, but this is Tokomaru Bay was another one of our, our whānau research groups. And Tauranga Moana here, here in Tauranga. Maybe I'll just go back. Pardon? I might just go back, just to explain a little bit about the the, um, the whānau research group. So the whānau from Ngātaki were really interested in kind of reclaiming the knowledge of maramataka mm -hmm. to be able to um, instil it in kura spaces. And one of the um, one of the tile spaces that was of interest to them was the, the June lakes, Ngā Keketo. Uh, and so we kind of developed our programme, although, I mean, there was lots of broad, broader kind of uh, focus, focuses too. Ngā Keketo was our focus for, for, this, for this whānau. And in the, the poll that I sung at the, the start of my presentation, that spoke to the desires of the whānau to um, reclaim some of the knowledge within the Ngā Kikito um, lake system. Tokomaru Bay, so our whānau here from Tokomaru Bay. Um, I th when we started the programme, 
Uh, again, there, was a, there were a number of interests. There were a number of here, here. Um, but we kind of narrowed it down to Paiwa as the focus species. So ngā, um, the, ngā to, uh, the Tokomaru Bay Fano focused their reclamation program around Paiwa, understanding the maramataka um, to be able to inform how monitoring of Paiwa would happen. And again, the, the, the party there at the end, it speaks to the Fano. Uh, and their experiences over the last few years with our storms and our floods and kind of just acknowledges that that time <laughs> that time of of their their um, journey in this space so our tauranga moana whanau so um, here in Tauranga Moana, we, what year was it, the first? 2018, the first um, Asian paddle crab was found here in Tauranga Moana. So the Asian paddle crab is, a, is an invasive species. And at the time, we didn't really know too much about it. Um, and so this, this whanau here, they stretch across um, three hapu areas, three rohe of Tauranga Moana and they have um, utilised the reclamation process to understand how they align their pāpaka trapping, so their pest eradication trapping, with maramataka. And then we have our kind of our research team. Uh. So myself, Kels, Kane Taiapa, Te Ririkohu, who will be speaking in, in another room later, I think, um, and Aaron, who's our kind of di digital tech program developer guy. So as I kind of suggested, one of the main components of our program was around the reclamation of maramataka knowledge, so local maramataka knowledge. And one of the real important things that came out of our program was that the um, knowledge around maramataka is, is so localised, like whānau, um, you know, so local that over a, within a hapu you could get four or five different maramataka, which is fabulous. It's fabulous. Um, and so our, uh, our program around the reclamation of maramataka knowledge kind of was, we, we framed it around three key po. The first being wal atua, the second wal tūpuna, and the third wal tangata. And our whole program was based around this, this framework. Um, so while atua kind of speaking to the connection with our atua spaces, with our taiao spaces, to understand maramataka is to understand and be out with taiao. Reclamation of wild tūpuna, so tūpuna speaking to our ancestral knowledges, um, so the gathering of the knowledge that sit within all of those different spaces of, of ancestral knowledge, our waiata, our whakapapa, our, um, our reo, um, so that's what kind of wild tūpuna speaks to. And then wild tangata is kind of a... So wild tangata speaks to the wow of man and is a... What is the word? It kind of suggests that without the practice, then... Without the practice within our space, our own spaces, then the whole system kind of is disconnected. So we can't just sit in in, in knowledge space. We have to actually apply and practice practice the knowledge. So in Ngātohu, the Waltangata um, component looked at trialing and testing the knowledge that was reclaimed in the in the Waltupuna space. So I'm just going to go quickly over all of these three, a little bit more detail. So reclaiming knowledge, connecting to Wal Atua, and, and as Anne-Marie kind of explains, we, I'm not going to share any of our reclaimed knowledge from our whānau, I think ma ratawa nō tērā, ka, ka, ka toro atu mena ka hia hia. This is more about the process as a, from a researcher's perspective, what we did to um, kind of develop and 
guide some of the, the reclamation process within all of our case study, three case study areas. So um, connecting to well Atua for us was getting out across all of our three case study areas, um, listening to the stories of, of the kaumātua, the kuia in, tho in those spaces, and just getting a feel of what, um, what the whānaus of those places were talking about. Uh, important kind of concept that was reiterated throughout our program is that it's okay to talk about it, like you can, you can hear it, but to actually get out into place and space gives you another appreciation of, of those spaces. So that was kind of key to our setup, getting out. And we spent a lot of time um, just walking around places, collecting kōrero, uh, across all three of the, the case study areas. Not working. This is a little bit of a video, but it's not working. But um, so um, as part of our reclamation of tūpuna knowledge, we, we workshopped with each of the Fano research groups to reclaim the knowledge within their maramataka systems. And so looking at um, the names of the different components of the, the maramataka, starting from the big um, tamanui tera and all of the, the words that are associated with him, um, the fetu, so collecting all of the fetu names associated with the maramataka, the marama names, all of those names associated with with the individual um, whānau research groups. And so at the end of it, I don't know if there's a thing on there. Oh no, doesn't have it. Oh. Um, so the first process was just to get all the names down and I think this kind of exemplifies that process. Um, we just sat with the whānau and basically laid all of the, the kupu that they have had reclaimed over the time and put it onto a onto dial a dial system. And so our dials were quite were really, really useful. We can play that if you want, like I can start typing it up just like that. Yeah, shall we? And I'll just talk over it. Very basic dial systems, I mean simple as, but they were really, really useful in terms of um, us being able to layer Kōrero and information, and also I think for me it was a it was a really good way of understanding how the whole system was connected. So this is an example of one of our one of our wānanga. Who was this with cows? This was us as a team. Oh, okay. But, but we did this process yesterday. So. Getting down all the names first, the different names that were held within the different areas. And then the second stage was looking at the words, the kupu within those um, that reclaimed maramataka and tr trying to understand the deeper meanings and processes that those kupu explained. And one of the real important components of this process was um, that we had a mātanga reo as part of our team, Te Riri Kohutu Te Rangifu. So he was able to work with um, the individual whānau to be able to break all of the, the kupu down into their kind of core components and then weave them all back together so that the, um, there was a, a, a real meaningful and deep understanding of what those kupu meant. And then we put together some, some working tools based on the reclaimed um, maramataka knowledge. Okay. Yeah. So very simple, but very effective. Very effective in, in terms of being able to, to wānanga um, with a group of people and kind of brain dump onto one space, but then have it interactive and, and layered and um, being able to see all the different connections and, and relationships between the different dials. Um, so, Hual Tupuna, and we spent a lot of, lot of time doing this, at this uh, in our pro project. 
in terms of our, um, our wild tangata, so the actual practical application, as a, as a whānau, as a research collective, a Ngātohu research collective, we decided that we all wanted to commit to a whole year of observations, like deep observations of taiao. So taking those, that knowledge that was shared within the wild tūpuna space and actually going out, developing our observation skills and testing and trialling that knowledge that, um, that was c collected and collated. And so as a, as a whole Ngātohu whānau, we committed to a full year of um, of observations, um, which meant that we needed to get outside Pitaki Waho. Mm. We needed to kind of open up our sensory observations, um, Fakatupuna i Totato Tirohanga Kiteao, and Pumahara. So our Pumahara sessions every month with all of our each one of our three case study groups, um, basically hui each month online or in person sharing observations of space um, and knowledge. And so we were able to build up over a whole year oh, lots of amazing corridor and data. Mm, tiro. I think I spoke a little bit about that sensory experiences of Taiyao. Um, I think one of the one of the here here of <coughs> of Ngato who was to really showcase our pukinga and our practitioners of of knowledge and provide a space to be able to um, to um, enable that knowledge to be shared within the research group. Oh, and our pumahara so. Talking about, I was talking about coming together every month, like Ia Marama, come together, talk about all of the different observations that we um, that we made in the past month, and then planning, looking forward to the next month. What do we need to do as a research group or as a research fano to prepare for the next stage of whatever we're doing, whether it be in the mara, whether it be out fishing, whether it be monitoring the paiwa. The um, our Pumahara sessions provided space for that. Yes. And Kuira, that is the end of that is yeah, the end of it. <laughs>